Welcome back to another video. So I just decided to pretty much grab the camera this morning and start filming. So every week I, for the past little bit, have been making sourdough bread and I am not a seasoned sourdough baker at all, but I decided the end of last year, I think it was, or maybe it was the middle of last year, that I really wanted to learn how to do sourdough. So I actually did my own starter or captured my own starter. Um, which was a process all in itself and I can try to link videos down below for what video I used and then I pretty much went on a mission to find sourdough recipes that we really liked as a family that I could make for us so I could start making all our own bread um, whether it's sourdough or plain but I kind of want to move towards the sourdough side of things so I thought that in today's video I would just film my weekly sourdough baking <coughs> ritual I make one to two loaves of sourdough bread a week because we do eat regular too, but I use the sourdough for like breakfast sandwiches, I like it with like eggs and toast, like I use the sourdough bread. Um, primarily uh, me and the kids eat sourdough and Nelson eats a little bit of sourdough but he doesn't eat totally sourdough. So it took me a while to actually find a sourdough recipe that I liked. Some recipes called for more whole wheat flour, some were just didn't ferment as long as what I would like. Um, so I pretty much watched a couple videos here on YouTube. One of the major ones I watched is Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone and there was a couple other ones if you just search like easy sourdough bread recipes you can find some good ones and I kind of created my own recipe or combined a bunch of them to make something that I liked so that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. So it is the morning, it is 9.30 and I'm getting ready to feed my starter he or she or it whatever has been in the fridge for about a week since I baked last so I'm gonna get it out and feed it I haven't always been super particular with my starter um just kind of the some of the videos I watched some ladies are and some ladies have not been so um trying to think of her name Clarita not sure of her last name but she's on Instagram she just did some sourdough stories I was talking about how she feeds her starter the ratio she uses so I am trying the ratio she uses um, see if it affects my bread at all, if it makes it better. Um, but one thing I am doing is I measure all my things with a food scale. I feel like it gives me better, more accurate results for my measurements. So if you're kind of new to the sourdough world or you want to get started, definitely get yourself a food scale. Um, they're like $10 on Amazon. I can link the one I have down below as well. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and feed my starter. So once you have a nice, healthy, bubbly starter, or if you have a starter in the fridge, pull it out and feed it. And then in about three, four hours, we're going to get started on our bread. And it'll be ready to bake tomorrow morning at about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, something like that. So yeah, 9.30 today, I'm feeding my starter. And in pretty much 24 hours, we will have bread that's ready to bake. So let's get started. I'll show you guys what I'm doing, kind of walk you through like every step of the way. And so... If you've been looking for kind of a sourdough recipe or wondering how I make mine, here you go. So getting started, I'm going to feed my starter first and today I was putting in like 70 to 75 grams of sourdough starter and then 150 grams of flour and 150 grams of water so it's two times the amount of flour and water to what you use of your starter and then i just throw away the rest or you can even use it to make something separate like sourdough pancakes i haven't done that yet but you can so i put my sourdough in the bottom and then i put in my water top it off with my flour and i mix it with a silicone spatula not using metal because i guess you're not supposed to i'm not exactly sure why but i know you're not supposed to so silicone or wood is what i go for when i'm mixing up my starter in the beginning before i make anything with it
this in a nice glass jar and this lid is not screwed on it's just sitting on um you don't want to do something that's gonna like leave the air or the air that can't get in to your jar because this sourdough starter is just capturing yeast out of the air and this is going to be your yeast for your bread so obviously if it can't get air it can't capture yeast it's gonna not you know be active or whatever or die or something like that so anyways um i also have a rubber band around the jar this kind of marks where my starter is after i fed it so kind of here's where it is now and then you'll be able to see once it rises how far it rises um or the different levels and it'll get super nice and bubbly right now if you can see it it is i don't know if it'll focus but it's really dense not very bubbly at all and once it kind of like activates it looks like a sponge it looks really cool so this is just gonna sit on my cupboard and i will catch up with you guys in a few hours so here is what my sourdough starter looks like and you guys can kind of tell hopefully it's like got quite a bit of bubbles it hasn't grown like double in size yet but that's okay because for our first step with the bread we actually don't need our sourdough starter so the first thing i'm gonna do let me get my recipe card um all the ingredients first off are in grams so if you're wanting to use this recipe you definitely need a kitchen scale for that um, but the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to combine my water it's 350 grams of water and 500 grams of bread flour and that's going to sit for 30 minutes the reason it's going to sit is that gives the flour a little bit of time to absorb the water and hydrate i think is that the right word then i'm going to um add in my last two ingredients which is 10 grams of sea salt and 100 grams of my active starter so after all my ingredients are combined I am going to let that sit on a warm stove for like an hour. So after it sits for an hour, I'm gonna begin the whole stretch and fold process. And if you guys have seen anybody else's sourdough videos, you might have seen them doing this. If not, I'm gonna show you how I do it, so no worries. And that is gonna be three stretch and folds that are 15 minutes apart, and then three more stretch and folds that are 30 minutes apart. But the stretch and fold basically, like I said, it just takes the place of kneading your bread, and it's a really easy way to do this you can do this while you're at home obviously you kind of have to be at home if you're doing this after all my stretch and folds are done i wait three two three four hours kind of keep an eye on the bread till it's about doubled in size and then after that i am going to put it in my banneton basically my proofing basket for overnight and then it's going to go in the fridge if you don't have a proofing basket no worries, you can use a like bowl lined with a tea towel, you can use a bowl lined with parchment paper, I have done it so many different ways. But I'm just going to show you kind of what I do now that I've walked you through the whole process. I'm going to jump into it, just show you as I'm doing things, maybe explain things a little bit better um, and kind of like reiterate them as I go through the different steps for you guys. So I'm definitely not super particular or fancy and I don't even always have the exact measurement but it's as close as I can be. And so anyways, I'm dumping my water in the bowl and then I'm gonna add in my flour and mix it. It makes kind of like a shaggy dough. And then I will just put some sort of lid or covering on this and let it sit for the 30 minutes before I come back to start mixing in the rest of my ingredients. combine the last two ingredients into my dough and then start the whole stretching and folding and sitting and rising process but before I do I wanted to take a minute to thank Dowen for sponsoring today's video and tell you guys a little bit about them so Dowen is a company that produces mainly like kitchen items and they produce some really pretty like ceramic or porcelain bowls and dishes and decorative dishes like 
just the cutest of things that you love to kind of like spruce up your kitchen and give it that extra touch. So they sent me a few items that I am really excited to share with you guys and that I'm actually using for today's video. So I thought it was such a great fit for what I wanted to share with you guys and I definitely want to show you guys the wide range of products that they have and the cool things that they offer. So the first thing that Dowin sent me is this pretty little blue casserole dish I guess you call it it is a nice rectangular size it is thinner and long so it's not a 9 by 13 I'm not exactly sure what the exact dimensions are but it is just such a cute size and it has this pretty like embossed blue pattern it is super easy to wash up and I actually used this this morning I made baked oatmeal for me and Zendaya and this was the perfect thing so oven safe dishwasher safe the next thing that Dowen sent to me is this set of mixing bowls and actually you saw the one when I was making my bread so there's this brown one back here if you can see it there's a large blue one which is like four and a quarter quarts there's the medium one which I am making my bread in that is two quarts and then there is this adorable little gray one which is I think a half quart and these are like do they call them nesting bowls i can't think of the exact name but they're super cute decorative bowls to add to your kitchen they're perfect for me and i was actually looking for some sort of like porcelain ceramic style bowl that i can use for mixing things or baking in when i don't want to do it in my stainless bowls i have heard and i don't even know why but that you're not supposed to use sourdough with metal or metal is not supposed to come in contact with your sourdough like your dough or your starter or anything like that so that was definitely something that i needed to get a good bowl to mix things in and down came in like right in the perfect time when i was looking for one last but not least they sent me a butter dish this is something that i've never had and thought it would be super cute to have because i do use a lot of butter and it's something i'm constantly reaching for and it's really nice when it can be soft and not hard from sitting in the fridge and it's nice to have a cute decorative dish to sit it in as well so this is the butter dish that Dowen sent me and it has butter here embossed on the front and then the back is just plain so if you're someone who doesn't always like your dishes being labeled you can use this either way super plain on one side and minimalistic and the other side is really cute for just a kitchen item and then it comes with this little butter knife as well and this fits right in here on this lid and the lid has ooh, hold on the lid has a rubber seal if you can see that so it seals tight to keep everything that you want in in everything you don't want in out and it's a good big size it would actually fit like four sticks of butter so I am super excited about using this in my kitchen it is just gonna make a great addition to everything that I already have so if you are in need of upgrading some of your kitchen products or you're looking for a gift for somebody or you just kind of want to see what down has to offer check out their links down below I'll have everything linked for you guys they really just have a variety of very pretty kitchen items that just make great additions to your kitchen and I hope you love them as much as I do so now that my flour and water is fully hydrated I'm gonna add in my starter and doesn't this look so fresh and just like healthy it's alive and active and growing you can see the bubbles I just love how it looks after it's like really grown once you feed it so I'm gonna add in my starter and then top it off with my salt I use like a coarse ground sea salt and that works great for me, but you can use kind of whatever you have. After I have this well mixed, I actually stick it on the back of my oven or my stove and I turn the oven just on warm just to give it a nice warm place. Right now it's winter so our house isn't the warmest ever and I found that gives it a good warm place to sit. I also cover it with a silicone cover because I don't want any air getting in there to make the top of my dough crusty or hard. So now it's been sitting for an hour just resting and I'm going to do like the stretch and fold and this is in the place of kneading so I'm going to pick up the one side of the dough and it helps if you wet your hands before you do this. Just stretch it up 
and fold it over and then I keep doing this till I'm completed a full circle oftentimes it's four to five like stretch and folds until I've completed a whole circle and I've really stretched the dough from underneath and pulled it over the top I will do a total of six stretch and folds three of them are 15 minutes apart and then after those three are done i will do three more that are 30 minutes apart so it really gives the dough time to rest in between but also helps to work it and knead it kind of together after all the stretch and folds i let it sit till it's doubled in size so about three hours and look at this nice fluffy dough so this is in the evening right before i'm ready to go to bed I flour my countertop really good because I don't want this sticking. Then I turn my dough out onto the countertop and do the finishing processes of folding and creating a nice skin on my bread. While I'm dusting my countertop with flour, I'm also going to go ahead and flour my banneton, which this is the proofing basket that it sits in overnight, and then I just dump the extra flour out onto the bread. So here we can start our stretch and fold, and I'm going to kind of do an envelope fold. So I fold the right side in, the top side down, and then I fold the bottom side up, and then the left side in. It doesn't matter if you do it exactly in that order, but basically four folds to create a nice like folded loaf I guess you call it and then you get that nice skin on the bottom and here I'll begin stretching and working it to kind of just get a nice tight bowl that'll give you that sourdough crust that you're looking for in a loaf of bread. Some people have particular ways they do this but I just kind of twist it and work it till I get that tight skin and then after it's nice and folded I will put it the nice side down or the smooth side down in my banneton and cover it overnight. This will go in my fridge just like this till I wake up and can bake it the next morning. So it is the next morning. I'm getting ready to bake my bread this morning and I thought I would kind of walk you guys through what I'm going to do real quick before I just jump in. So it's been in the refrigerator all night and first off I'm going to start by preheating my oven to 450 with my Dutch oven inside of it. So you want that to get nice and hot. So I'm going to let that preheat for like 30 minutes or so and then once that's ready I'm going to get my bread out of the fridge and I am gonna flip it over onto a piece of parchment paper and then is when I'm going to score the top I just use a razor blade um, and you can yeah do whatever you want I'm definitely not the like queen of scoring designs so yeah it's not gonna be anything fancy or whatever um, but then after that I'm going to like use the parchment paper to put it in the Dutch oven it makes it really easy and simple to transfer your loaf of bread and then it's gonna bake in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes with the lid on and then I'm gonna take the lid off and it's gonna bake another 20 to 25 minutes with it off so that's kind of what I'm gonna do it's super simple it's just kind of like the baking steps it takes a little bit but like I said it's really really simple and easy to do these last couple of steps for those of you that probably don't have a silicone cover you can always use a wet tea towel or saran wrap just wrap it really tightly you just don't want air getting in there to make your bread tough or make like the top of your dough tough i love those silicone covers because they're so easy and i definitely recommend getting some if you don't have them you can use them for whatever but anyhow i'm gonna go ahead and turn my bread out get a design cut into it and then get it put in the dutch oven to bake is such a great sling to carry your dough ball around before it's baked and also is easy to lift it into the Dutch oven when it is so extremely hot. So excuse my horribly dirty oven but I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off so it can bake for another like 25 minutes to get nice and golden and here's kind of what it looks like and it did split a little bit for me which is kind of a bummer but it is the way it is and it still tastes so good. Hey 
thank you guys so much for watching today's video i am gonna go ahead and end the vlog and i'll show you real quick up close like me showing you how this turned out so it turned out really good um it did split at the one side and i'm not exactly sure why that is i'm kind of still working on that so if you have tips leave them down below for me because i'll take them but thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and maybe it gave you something new and fun to try i'm gonna get going for today but i will see you guys next week in my next video bye guys